Let's talk about the blocking and tackling of winning elections tonight. AI, sports, impeaching Mayorkas, huge show coming up on I'm Right. Super Bowl was last night. No, I'm not going to talk to you about the Super Bowl. I don't really know anything about the Super Bowl. I get it. The Chiefs won, whatever. But it did prompt me to talk about blocking and tackling. Why do I use that phrase? Well, the great Vince Lombardi, I used to be an NFL freak. I used to watch football all the time. And Vince Lombardi, for those who don't watch, is one of the great NFL coaches. And you know football, at least if you don't watch it, but you know about all the different plays, right? The twip, triple wide receiver screen, the reverse, the flea flicker, all these crazy things they do. And you know what Vince Lombardi always said? You know what he always said? All football is just blocking and tackling. All these screens and fancy this and blitz and that, it's just blocking and tackling is how you win the game. Be great at blocking, be great at tackling, you win the game. I want you to think about politics for a moment. We make a mistake. It's easy for us to make this mistake. So I'm not judging you and not judging me. I make the same mistake, but especially now, we think about elections as if they're all about issues or all about this candidate. Oh, they love him. They hate him. They hate him, but they hate him, but they hate him more. Uh, uh, people were mad at uh, Joe Biden about the border, uh, inflation. This we, we take these issues and how people are feeling about things, and we immediately make that the election results. People are unhappy with Joe Biden. Joe Biden's a crazy old dementia-ridden communist who opened up the border. They're mad about it. Therefore, he's going to lose. Oh, look, Joe Biden's, uh, he, his poll numbers are bad. He's down in all the swing states. Therefore, he's going to lose. Now, don't get me wrong. I hope he does lose. I'm rooting for that. You're probably rooting for that as well. But that's a triple wide receiver screen. It's not blocking and tackling. In this day and age, blocking and tackling in elections is what? What do I mean by that? Get out the vote. I don't mean going on TV and telling people, go vote, rock the vote this year. I mean, do you have an army of people dialing up? Hey, have you voted yet? Have you turned in your ballot yet? Speaking of ballots, do you have a machine in place in every swing state? A machine that is chasing down ballots for you. You know, we all make fun of John Fetterman because he's a United States senator who's recovering, thankfully, but who got elected and he couldn't talk. That's what he sounded like, couldn't talk at all. And people were all, how could that happen? How could he pull that off? John Fetterman had 500,000 votes banked before election day in Pennsylvania. Why the Democrat machine in place chasing down ballots. Have you turned in your ballot yet? Sending people text messages. I see you haven't turned in your ballot, Mark. We'll come pick up your ballot for you. Blocking and tackling of elections is fundraising. Get out the vote efforts. Chasing down ballots in this country. That is what decides elections now. And I want you to listen to my friend Molly Hemingway here. Instead of having total security and a verifiable chain of custody for ballots being issued, cast, and counted, we flood addresses across the country with tens of millions of unsupervised mail-in ballots months ahead of elections, frequently to locations from which voters, if they're even alive, have long since moved. We have allowed the private takeover of government election offices by partisan oligarchs and their armies of activists who use those offices and their authorities to tilt the election toward favored candidates. In the last presidential election, nonprofit groups with very strong ties to the Democrat Party and funded by one of the world's wealthiest and most powerful men, Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg, took over government election offices, most notably in the Democrat areas of swing states. Since then, the efforts by partisans to further infiltrate government election offices to ensure favorable outcomes have only increased. I'm not trying to be doom and gloom. I'm not. I'm trying to shake the right awake. I'm trying to make people understand, stop talking about the freaking poll numbers. I see so much preemptive giddiness from the right. Oh my gosh, we're up five. Woo, Joe's in trouble. 
We have got to get better at blocking and tackling. Did you know the Democrat National Committee, the DNC, has sent millions of dollars, over $10 million dollars, to the state apparatus of different states. You know how much the Republican, the RNC, has sent? Nothing. Nothing. Millions of dollars in the Democrat coffers for data mining, data collection. Who do we go after? How do we go after them? The RNC? Nothing. I want a smarter right. I want a right, and this doesn't apply to you, that understands it's the blocking and tackling that will win us elections. I don't want to wake up this coming November, or wake up, we'll all be staying up all night that night as the results come in. I don't want to stay up all night this coming November and have that feeling we had in 2020. Do you remember that feeling? I remember that feeling. 2016, Trump beats Hillary, the elation, the joy, yes, the hag is gone. 2020, of course, Trump's gonna win re-election, right? The polls look good, remember the polls look good. And then, as the ballots come rolling in, late at night, of course, Donald Trump's no longer president of the United States of America. Democrats understand blocking and tackling. The right understands poll numbers. One of those ways is how you win the game. The other is how you lose the game. Look, Democrats, they're not, not taking any chances out here. You're watching right now. You're watching them push Joe Biden out. He's, he's being pushed out. Hey, I mean, look, this special counsel report was really bad. It was really bad. Hey, Joe Biden's a criminal, uh, but his mind is so broken. He's so old and pathetic that we're not even going to charge him. Ooh, looks bad, right? And then to defend himself, Joe Biden gives a press conference and, well, it went about as well as we could expect. I think that, uh, as you know, Initially, the president of Mexico, Sisi, did not want to open up the gate to allow humanitarian material to get in. I talked to him. I convinced him to open the gate. I talked to Bibi to open the gate on the Israeli side. The president of Mexico, Sisi. Look, we don't have to play the rest of it. You've seen it all. You've seen him yelling at reporters. But the system's pushing Joe Biden out because the system intends to win in November. There's even the ultimate Democrat, Hillary Clinton, going on television, now openly questioning Joe Biden's age. The thing that we keep seeing in poll after poll after poll is concern about Biden's age, mm -hmm. full stop. Mm -hmm. What should he do on this? Does he, is it, is a matter of sort of like uh, underscoring his boundless energy mm -hmm. or or should he embrace his you know eight decades on earth and the and the great wisdom he's gained through all of this I, I, I mean do you all have of the above all yeah. of the above I mean I you know I talk to people in the White House all the time yeah. and you know they know it's an issue but as I like to say look it's a legitimate issue it's a legitimate issue for Trump who's only three years younger right so it's an issue Hillary Clinton never talks like that unless she knows. They're pushing him out because they intend to win this election. Not, they're not sitting around, yeah, our poll numbers. They intend to hold on to the presidency. All that may have made you uncomfortable, but I am right. Talk a little bit more about Joe Biden. That weird thing he put out, I saw a video of it during the Super Bowl talking about shrinkflation. Well, before we get to any of that, um, what'd you eat yesterday? What'd you drink? You put some toxins in your body yesterday? You did, don't lie. I did, don't lie. You know what had to work extra hard to filter all that out is your liver. You know that, right? You know we have to care for our livers and we neglect them. They are the filtration system for our body. That's what, get, or that's what liver health formula is about. Go to getliverhelp.com slash jesse and read, this is a drug-free solution. A drug-free, all-natural way to clean your liver. It is a filter, just like your air conditioning filter, just like your coffee filter. It has to be cleaned or replaced. I don't want you to have to get a new one. So go to get Liver Health Formula. GetLiverHelp.com slash Jesse. Care for your liver. It's the only one you're ever going to have. We'll be back.
very quickly, was it a mistake for him not to do the Super Bowl interview to miss talking to as many as 60 million people? No, I don't think so. I think people really want to watch the Super Bowl tonight and, and, and think about football. They don't want to hear from a politician. A few moments later. The Super Bowl Sunday. If you're anything like me, you like to be surrounded by a snack or two while watching the big game. You know, when buying snacks for the game, you might have noticed one thing. Sports drinks bottles are smaller. A bag of chips has fewer chips, but they're still charging it just as much. And as an ice cream lover, what makes me the most angry is that ice cream cartons have actually shrunk in size, but not in price. I've had enough of what they call shrinkflation. It's a ripoff. Some companies are trying to pull a fast one by shrinking the products little by little and hoping you won't notice. Give me a break. The American public is tired of being played for suckers. I'm calling on companies to put a stop to this. Let's make sure businesses do the right thing now. It is garbage when you think about it. You pay full price for an item, and instead you get something, well, that only works about half the time, like Joe Biden himself. Joining me now, the hosts of Crane and Company on The Daily Wire, Jake Crane, Blaine Crane, and David Cohn. Okay, Jake. It's very obvious Joe Biden skipped the whole Super Bowl address thing because he can't talk or probably wipe his own butt. But I didn't understand the whole messaging thing. Could you explain this to me? Uh, well, you know, I, my brain works, Jesse, so I can't really. But uh, number one, thank <laughs> you for having us. Look, uh, you know, uh, like you said, it's not like he just skipped this, you know, the Super Bowl interview because, oh, well, he didn't have time. He was doing all these other things. He can't go out there and do anything live because right now, let's call a spade a spade. The man makes Forrest Gump look like Nikola Tesla. What I find that the funniest part, and you played this at the top of your clip, is how you know the guy said, "Well, we don't want to interrupt an athletic event uh, and and show a politician," and then you immediately interrupt an athletic event to show that same politician, basically in a word, making fun of himself. How you can sit here and say they're playing the American people like suckers when you guys have been playing us like we're the dumbest people on the planet for the last three and a half years. Again, uh, the emperor has no clothes. You don't have to be Sherlock Holmes to figure it out. I thought it was disingenuous and just be straight up. The man can't do it live. I mean, it, it is what it is. <laughs> Very clearly can't do it live. Okay, uh, Blaine, I have to ask you. Uh, not a big NFL fan anymore. I used to be an NFL freak, but I did see the picture seen around the world of Travis Kelsey screaming at his coach. Apparently, he hit his coach or at least bumped into him. What what am I looking at? This this is um, yeah. odd. Yeah, I, I kind of felt like Andy Reid, you know, throughout this NFL season where you just want to watch a football game. The next, you know, Travis Kelsey, aka Pfizer. The Black National Anthem and something else woke is screaming at me to like it. So am I surprised here? No. But there is a level to this uh, thing. When emotion and football, those two things come together as one. But never, no matter what level it is, be middle school, high school, college, NFL, you should never bump into or put your hands on another man because it becomes different once that happened. Do I think Travis Kelsey did this on purpose? No, I don't. I do think Andy Reid and his relationships has a lot to do with this. But never, ever. You put your hands on an NFL coach. Yeah, that used to be a big time no-no. Find your way to the locker room after all that. Okay, David, uh, the speaking of the Black National Anthem stuff, I did hear that they played it again. I've heard all this end racism stuff is still painted in the end zone. A lot of people think the NFL has moved away from all that St. George Floyd protest nonsense, but they really haven't. They got quieter about it. They haven't moved at all. Well, the Super Bowl did not play the Black National Anthem because newsflash, there is no such thing as the Black National <laughs> Anthem. There is no song, uh, there's uh, one uh, national anthem. And, uh, you know, I, what I've noticed from the political right for a long time is they've lost uh, the marketing message uh, from, the, from a younger generation, I believe. So from a marketing standpoint, I think everyone should stop using the phrase the Black National Anthem because, like Jake says, well, that just raises the question, well, where is the Hispanic National Anthem? Where is the Asian National Anthem? Now, I remember this country fighting multiple wars so that we could have a singular national anthem. But whatever that song is called, Lift Every Voice and Sing, or whatever other songs that are important, uh, important to us culturally that have different titles, let's just say we're singing those. What's wrong with that? If there's a song that's worthy of being sung at the Super Bowl that's called Lift Every Voice and Sing, well, then let's come together. Let's decide what the Overton window is, and either we play that or we don't. But under no circumstance will it be called the Black National Anthem. 
Jake, everyone remembers Dylan Mulvaney. I'm sad I even know who that person is. That weird tranny dude who ended up on the Bud Light cans and then Bud Light caught some serious heat from a boycott. And now we're moving away from that, apparently? Are we moving away from that? Why would we move away from that? Uh, look, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of like Jonah Hill and Superbad. You know, people don't forget. Uh, if Bud Light was smart, they wouldn't have tried to just throw a bunch of celebrities in a commercial. They would have had the CEO, the head of Anheuser-Busch, whatever, look down the barrel of the camera and say, look, we made a mistake. I apologize. We alienated the biggest part of our audience, and that's not what our mission is to do. But nobody will ever say they're wrong. We see this in politics. Anybody that's achieved anything at a high level, nobody can come out and, and have accountability and say we screwed up. And regardless of what Bud Light does, you can put Post Malone in the commercial, you can put Peyton Manning in the commercial. Every time I go to a bar or every time I stop at the grocery store to get some beer, every time I reach for the Bud Light, because I was a Bud Light drinker before this, I see Dylan Mulvaney. You can't get that out of my head now. I still do not know anybody that will order a Bud Light at the bar, not because they don't want to drink it, but because they're worried about everybody else, what they're going to think when they see me cracking open a Bud Light. You know, what's the next thing? I'm going to come and Dylan Mulvaney's going to come hang out with me? So, look, I, this has been one of the most successful boycotts that the ride has ever had. I don't see Bud Light being able to recover from this. I just don't, because all the money you throw at it, so many at the UFC. At the end of the day, I don't want to crack that beer and see Dylan Mulvaney smiling at me right before I drink it. That's actually my nightmare. Yeah, mine too. All right, Blaine, I have to ask before I let you guys go. Lady Ballers, I can't believe it's actually funny. Not that I'm doubting Daily Wire or y'all's capability. <laughs> it's just it, we, we've, been, we've been lacking on the right producing real entertainment. And over the last few years, and Daily Wire gets a lot of credit for a lot of this, we're actually producing entertainment that's good. I can't believe it. Well, yeah, people are scared to be funny now from being uh, canceled or being political correct. This movie, one, is funny, and two, it has a heartfelt message to it if you go and watch it at dailywire.com. Um, it kind of reminds me of the movies back in the 2000s, the dodgeball, the beer fest, the old school, the wedding crashers. It's that type of vibe. We're not shoving anything down your throat. It's a funny movie with a good message, a 99% message that men shouldn't play in women's sports. It's a safety thing, and I like what my brother says here to the left. It's one of those things you don't have to think about. It's like turning your blinker on in the highway. So if you haven't seen it, 96% uh, on Rotten Tomatoes, guys. It's a phenomenal movie, and I'm for sure the best actor in it. Yeah, you're the second <laughs> best, but you're Back a yeah. fault. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fellas, y'all be good. I appreciate it. It is funny, man. It's a funny movie. All right. We have to talk about some goings on in Congress, the spending, the impeachment, the everything else. We'll get to that next. Before we get to that, let's do this. Let's talk about your spending. You still spending money on your timeshare? A timeshare you don't even use anymore or can't use? Have you called them up recently? They're all doing the same thing. Uh, sorry, we're booked. Call back next year. And yet, you're still paying those annual fees, aren't you? Would you like to stop? Would you like to stop writing a check to a timeshare company you don't even use anymore? Lone Star Transfer, you know they can get you out legally and permanently. I don't just mean for a month or two, take a year off. You can be totally free of that timeshare burden that's weighing you down. All you have to do is call them. They are successful 99% of the time. They will legally and permanently get you out. 844 310 2646 or go to lonestartransfer.com. We'll be back. All right, I'm proud of you about something. You're proud of me. You're proud of all of us about something. You see, you know the whole Mayorkas failed impeachment thing. First of all, let me give you a quick update on that. That is probably going to happen again this week, the impeachment vote. Now Steve Scalise is back. At least one of those votes that was a no, he voted no in order to bring the impeachment back again. It's a stupid procedural thing. It doesn't matter what it is. But it looks like Mayorkas may actually be impeached this week, or the impeachment proceedings will begin this week. We will know what happens. So anyway, but why am I proud of you? Mike Gallagher? He's one of the weapons-grade losers who voted no. No, he's not the one who voted no for the right reasons. He 
very clearly felt the heat after his vote, and he has announced he's not running for re-election. And let me explain something. This won't get a bunch of headlines. People won't talk about this. This is huge, and it's hugely important, and here's why. Here's why. You, let's talk a little history here. Sorry, we're going to talk, let's talk history for a moment. You remember the Soviet Union, World War II, fighting against the Nazis. Stalin gives an order to the nation. You're not allowed to retreat. That's essentially what he tells his troops. Not, not one step back, you're not allowed to retreat. Well, here's the thing. In combat, you get scared. It's very natural to be scared. And sometimes the odds will be so overwhelming and things are going so badly that troops will historically turn around and run away. And Stalin knew this. So how would you enforce such an order? Well, he would send his troops into combat and then he would set up machine guns behind them. His own men manning the machine guns and the machine guns were not there for the Germans. The machine guns were there to gun down any Soviet soldier who turned and ran. If you were a Soviet soldier and you were running back the other way, the opposite direction of the Nazis, you would simply be gunned down by your own men. What am I saying here? If you can't guarantee bravery, you have to punish cowardice. So it disappears. It's very clear the GOP is going to remain the low-T GOP. This is the spineless, useless party that never stands up and fights for you or fights for me. Okay, I get that. We're not going to have a bunch of anti-communist warriors in Congress for some time. I understand that. You understand that. We can't make these people be brave, but we can make them afraid to run away. This is a very, very good thing. Members of Congress are so feeling the heat from you, they're calling it a day, calling it a night. Hey, you know what? I'm just going to retire. It's not a small thing. It's a big thing. It's a great thing. If we can whip these people into compliance or retirement with our anger, good for us. That is how it must work. Now, let's go back to this Mayorkas thing. Look, <laughs> there's not a nice way to put, it, put what has happened here. Democrats are now so completely taken over by communism that every time they take power, whenever they take the presidency, they will open up the country on purpose to flood it with the illegals. They will. That's a really frightening place to be for a nation, that that is even something that can happen. Nevertheless, that's where we are. Alejandro Mayorkas, just wrap your mind around this. He's made DHS secretary, the head of the Department of Homeland Security. And he uses that position to open the border to destroy the country. It's a tough place to be, right? Here was him on Meet the Press giving some really lame excuses. Do you bear responsibility for what is happening at the border, what the president himself has called a crisis? It certainly is a crisis, and well, we don't bear responsibility for a broken system. Oh, we don't bear any responsibility. Yeah, it's a crisis. Who did that? Yeah, really sleazy, sleazy human being, and yes... If he is actually removed, which he won't be by the Senate, but if he was to be actually removed, I realized they would just replace him with another open borders communist who hates America as much as he does. Nevertheless, it is important for these people to know they will get punished, embarrassed for the things they do. It is important. Now, let's move on to some other things. 18 Republicans in the United States Senate of course, cross the aisle to join with Democrats to fund $95 billion in foreign aid to Ukraine and Israel and all this other garbage. Now, let me explain here, explain something really, really plainly here for a moment. The 18 Republicans, it's all leadership Republicans, all the ones who want to be the next leader. It's the leaders in the Senate. It's the Mitch McConnell types the John Cornyn types, the, the, the Mike Rounds, we know all these. I'll get back to those senators in a moment. I want to talk about the actual money. Because maybe, maybe you're watching me right now and maybe you're thinking, well, that's great. I'm glad we're helping Ukraine. Or more likely, you're watching and you're saying, well, good, we should support Israel. I love Israel. I support them. Okay, I need to explain something again. Because this is something that Americans, because of our education system, it's not our fault, because our education system is evil and commie, 
we don't learn basic economics. Do you know why your standard of living has gone down over the last three years? Do you know why going to the grocery store is a stress and a strain? Why, why can't you afford burger and eggs? Do you know why going out to eat has gotten more and more rare for you? Because it's gotten more and more expensive. Take the family of four to Applebee's, you're gonna drop a hundred bucks anymore. It's crazy, these prices. I took my son to Waffle House this weekend. All-star breakfast special, I used to get it for six, seven bucks, 11, 12 bucks now. It's crazy. Do you know why though? You know why? Because we spend money and print money we don't have. Not you, the government. Government spending is why your standard of living has gone down. I cannot scream this loud enough. Every person in the country needs to understand. The latest trillion dollar bill here or trillion dollar bill there passed through Congress isn't just outrageous because of all the garbage that's in the bill. It's outrageous because every single penny that they spend now, now that we're all out of money, we're 34 trillion in debt, every penny they spend decreases your standard of living. It reduces the power, the spending power of your dollar. So back to what we were just talking about. Well, I love Ukraine. I love Israel. Fine, I love them. Love them all you want. We don't have money left. People have such a difficult time understanding where we are and that where we are is a math question, not Republican, Democrat, or anything else. We know. We can see the debt. We see the interest rates. We don't have the money. We don't have money for Medicare. We don't have money for Medicaid. We don't have money for Social Security. We don't have money for the brand new Navy fleet we need to buy. We don't have money for Ukraine. We don't have money for Israel. We don't have money. And screaming at me how important something is doesn't do any good at all because the money's not there. The money's gone. They spent it all. And the sad thing is, I know that about the dollar. You know that about the dollar. You're aware. And our leaders don't. And they don't care. Republican, Democrat, they don't care at all. They have that taxpayer-funded checkbook, and they just love stroking those checks. And maybe the worst part is our enemies, they are very, very aware of what a weakened dollar means. You know, to use the dollar as a tool of foreign policy struggle is one of the biggest strategic mistakes made by the U.S. political leadership. The dollar is the cornerstone of the United States power. I think everyone understands very well that no matter how many dollars are printed, they are quickly dispersed all over the world. Nevertheless, it is the main weapon used by the United States to preserve its power across the world. As soon as the political leadership decided to use the U.S. dollar as a tool of political struggle, a blow was dealt to this American power. I would not like to use any strong language, but it is a stupid thing to do and a grave mistake. A grave mistake. What do you think BRICS is all about? B-R-I-C-S. It's the new currency backed by major powers like China, India, Brazil, Saudi Arabia now signing on board because what Vladimir Putin, our enemy, just said is 100% true. The dollar is our strength in the world, and our leaders are destroying it. They're destroying your standard of living. They're destroying our standing in the world to send more money to Ukraine and Israel. The money is gone. The money's all gone. I saw an article recently, I'll, I'll leave you with this. I saw an article recently about tipflation. And here's, here's what the deal is, waitresses, they're upset because people aren't tipping as much. Customers, they aren't tipping as much because the food costs more. They can't afford to tip as much. Restaurants, they need more customers to come in, but the customer doesn't. So every, what's, what's happening is everyone feels squeezed. Everyone. The restaurant owner feels squeezed. The waitress obviously feels squeezed. She needs the money. She needs the tip. The customer feels squeezed. I can't pay twice as much for the same meal. And everyone is squeezed because of the government because of the government spending. So next time you're sitting there at the restaurant stressing over, do I leave them 25%? I don't understand. Next time you're there, 
I want you to think about 90 plus billion dollars once again. <laughs> Gone. Over to other people. Not you, of course. No help for you. But foreign countries. That probably made you uncomfortable too. But I am right. Now, Technology makes me uncomfortable. It's, it's not just because I'm bad at it. There's a lot of really creepy stuff out there. AI, this artificial intelligence stuff, it seems bad. It seems like this is going to be used for bad. Let's talk about that next. Before we talk about that, let's talk about that money you have. They're clearly not going to stop spending. Republicans aren't. Democrats aren't. So what, what can you do about it? Well, you better get some precious metals in your physical possession. I, I think we're past the point of calling this optional, right? If it's humanly possible for you to get some precious metals in your physical possession, you need to make a phone call. At Oxford Gold Group, not only do they make it easy, you know, you might qualify for up to $10,000 in free precious metals. They'll get it as part of your retirement account so you don't lose everything. Again, they'll mail it to your front door, gold coins, silver coins. This is easy. It's for everybody. It's for normal people. They can't help you if you don't call. You have to call them. 833-995-GOLD. Tell them I told you to call, and they will take care of you. I promise. These are my people. I send family there, friends there, Oxford Gold Group. 833-995-GOLD. We'll be back. I'm so old and confused. I need Joe in here to explain what I'm looking at. Joining me now, author of the book Dark Eon, Joe Allen is going to talk about all this transhumanism, AI stuff. After all, he's the one who wrote the big book on it. Joe, okay, I, text messaging is about as in-depth as I get technology-wise. Would you please explain to me why people are wearing goggles over their faces while they drive down the road? What is this thing? Uh, well, Jesse, thanks for having me. And that that what we just saw is the ultimate in bug man lifestyle. Uh, you've got <laughs> a uh, portly gentleman in a self-driving car, I believe, uh, with an Apple Vision Pro strapped to his face with a Whole Foods in the background. I, that, it really doesn't get much more 2024 than that. So, uh, you know, the way I think about this oftentimes as far as the progression of the technology you think about how the original movie theaters had a screen on the wall off in the distance and the viewer had a bit of distance uh, psychologically as well. That screen got closer and closer with the television in the living room and the propaganda then being pumped into homes individually and then a little bit closer with the personal computer and then the laptop where it's frying your gametes on your lap and then the smartphone where it's frying your irises uh, in your hand and now at least some people are moving to putting the screen directly over the eyes. And of course, Elon Musk is working day and night to ensure that we're able to enjoy our digital content with a direct brain to, com or brain, uh, to computer interface. So that is kind of the, the intended direction of all of this. And every time you see someone wandering around with uh, you know electronic ski goggles and uh, the you know their own tailor-made propaganda being pumped into their eyeballs, you should think of it on that uh, that spectrum. Uh, Joe, can you explain what exactly the Apple? We'll get to the Neuralink here in a moment with Elon, but what exactly the Apple Vision Pro is? How can you walk around with it? Why do people even want to do this? It looks uncomfortable. Why are they doing this? You know, the first question I can answer, you know, how does it work? Why people want to do this is something that I've still yet to uh, come to a reasonable conclusion on. The Apple Vision Pro really is its an augmented reality headset. It also has virtual reality capabilities. Augmented reality is just you have kind of, it looks like a hologram superimposed over the real world. 
And if you've seen any of the, the rendering, the display, it's just like you have uh, an iPhone right in front of your face. You're able to kind of tap the apps. Uh, the, the biometrics are able to sense not only everywhere your eyes are looking, but also uh, the sensors see where your hands are so you can control your smartphone on your face. Uh, and then, of course, there are virtual reality modes where your entire visual field is taken over by a digital landscape. Uh, the ridiculous rollout promo showed a man using the mindfulness app to uh, you know, calm his soul in an otherwise uh, disconcerting universe. So uh, you know, that's, it really is, is quite simple. This is an old technology that's finally been refined to the point that major corporations think it's time to roll it out for the public. You know, we I've been on your show and, of course, at the War Room, we've talked endlessly about Mark Zuckerberg's claim on the metaverse. Uh, Apple is just the latest iteration. It's more technically advanced than uh, Meta's technology. But will this be the one that causes everyone to sink into a digital demiurge? I don't think so. But I do think that it's uh, definitely a step on the way. Okay, I'm glad you brought up Meta because I wanted to ask about that. That never took off. I know enough to know that never took off. It didn't end up taking over everything like a lot of people, myself included, thought it might. My question is, why did Meta suck? Or have we reached a point where a lot of human beings, yeah, there are obviously some people who are going to succumb to it. Have we reached a point where a lot of people are pulling back and saying, you know, that's probably too far? You know, that's a really good point. The the latter point, are people pulling back? Yeah, I think a lot of people are just completely revolted by this idea of the bug man lifestyle. And as long as those numbers stay strong, we may never hit a critical mass. This may always be something that only nerds are doing, unlike the smartphone, which basically dominates most people's business lives and personal lives. Um, you know, it's impossible to know how depraved the human soul will become to allow for this to be accepted at scale. But with Meta, Mark Zuckerberg's initial promo with the goofy little wee looking cartoons, that put a lot of people off. It just wasn't cool. Uh, it was like a seven hour promo. If you watched farther along, you could see a lot more advanced uh, uses of virtual reality. But most people were you know, too busy laughing at the beginning part uh, naturally. Uh, you know, Meta has struggled on a lot of different fronts, but it should be remembered that, you know, their last quarter, Meta reported a 20% increase, almost $200 billion. Uh, they're at almost a trillion dollars now. And Mark Zuckerberg is building out the infrastructure to train more and more uh, sophisticated artificial intelligence systems. He's openly now, and this has been not a secret, just wasn't something he talked about. He wants to create artificial general intelligence, AGI, uh, or artificial godlike intelligence. And they're doing it at, uh, in a way that it, many would say is irresponsible. Meta is open sourcing most of what they're doing, or at least that's their intention, meaning that others can imitate it, others can copy it, thus accelerating the field as a whole. So yeah, Meta is a, is, is a different story than Apple. Apple is more kind of on the products end, but Apple's also dipping into the AI game and we've seen Everything that's happening right now with Sam Altman running around asking for five to seven trillion dollars to build out the AI infrastructure, Ooh. even going to the UAE asking for money. I mean, if billionaires and, you know, soon to be trillionaires want something to happen, it may not happen like they said it will happen. But you can be sure something big will happen, even if that means the degradation of the education system, uh, degradation of uh, you know life at uh, your company, and even uh, some very dangerous uh, developments in the military. Uh, you know, the, the the speed is undoubtedly uh, you know breakneck, but uh, I, I don't. I think it's really important to uh, disentangle what they are promising from what is happening, and to separate those two from what normal people want. I hope, as you said a moment ago, I hope that enough people don't want this future because that will mean that at least for many, that future will not be a reality. Explain to me this Neuralink thing from Elon Musk. Obviously, when people hear about implanting some kind of robot chip in the brain, they recoil in horror. I most definitely do. At the same time, 
diseases, horrible things like Alzheimer's, dementia, speaking of Joe Biden, they're awful things. And if maybe you can put off some of those symptoms, that would be, good. well, why should I care about Neuralink? Should I be afraid? Should I embrace it? I think that it shows us two things. One, it shows a, a kind of ideal that a lot of these people hold as to where the technology should go. So for Elon Musk, he sees a world in which all these companies are rapidly pushing for artificial general intelligence or artificial godlike intelligence, as he would call it, digital god. And the only way for humans to keep up is to link the brain directly to these systems. The best way that they've come up with at this point is to insert thousands of hair thin wires into the brain that are connected to a processor, connecting you to small scale artificial intelligence. These are already in people's heads. Companies like BlackRock Neurotech and Synchron have done this for years. Uh, Neuralink just got their first patient implanted. The product is called telepathy. I think that tells you a lot about what the intention is. They want to be able to transfer thoughts over the web without the encumbrance of thumbs and eyeballs. Uh, that's the first reason this is an ideal. The second reason, it just shows you that the boundary between what is and isn't sacred and profane, uh, that that boundary doesn't exist for a lot of these guys. And as they push their products on us and people's children, uh, it should be uh, recognized that they don't see those same boundaries. It's up to us to put those boundaries up. Yeah. The book is Dark Eon. Go get it. I appreciate it, Joe. Thanks for making us smarter again. As Gosh, this is a whole new world. All right. We have light in the mood. A little PSA, light in the mood. Next. All right. It is time to lighten the mood. And you know how we do PSAs here from time to time? Just doing the Daddy Jesse thing. Just look, I'm a dad. Just trying to keep you out of trouble, keep you safe. Listen. I understand that people love celebrity and people want to be celebrities. People want to be noticed. They just, they, they want to be on camera one time. You ever, be, you ever go to a game and the fan can comes on and it was you? You go crazy, don't you? Oh my gosh, I'm on the Jumbotron. Everyone can look at me. I understand it. I get it all the way. Running onto the field is never, ever, ever a good idea. Not only will you probably get hurt when you get smeared by the security team, you will be arrested, you will pay a fine, they're probably not even going to air it on national television, so you will go through all this for nothing. Now, that's just me talking. I realize once you get to the game and the booze starts talking to you, maybe you operate differently, but this is always how it ends. paid thousands of dollars for a Super Bowl ticket just to end up with a criminal record. And what did you get out of it? Some grainy cell phone videos from a thousand feet above you. Why, guys? Why? I'll see you tomorrow.